what's going on everybody it's eta prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming more fine s600 mini pc now this thing is definitely packing the most powerful cpu that i've seen in this form factor because this is actually rocking an intel i9 12900hk so we've got 14 cores 20 threads up to 5 gigahertz and when it comes to cpu performance this thing can definitely throw down and it looks like they're also going to be offering one with the i9-12900H, but the version we're taking a look at in this video is their highest end with that HK. As you can see, we've still got a very small form factor PC here, coming in at 5.9 inches by 2.5 inches tall, and really a lot of the height here comes from the cooler they're using with this i9 CPU. If you're familiar with these Intel Alder Lake CPUs, you know they can definitely use some power, but this one here out of the box is set at 65 watts and it does a great job like that, but you can use Intel tuning utility to bring it up, and the cooler here does have more than enough room for a little more wattage. So I'm working with a prototype here, but it does support a 2.5 inch drive in the top lid, and there is a debate on what wattage power supply they're going to be sending, either 145 or 180, but through my testing we haven't pulled up to 145 out of this thing, so I think that would be fine. When it comes to I.O., up front here we've got two full-size USB 3.2 ports and a full function 3.2 USB Type-C, so this will support video out. So all in, we can connect three displays to this, running them all at 4K 60, because around the rear here, we've got a full-size HDMI 2.1 port and a full-size display port. Now, as for the other I.O., we've got two USB 2.0 ports back here, two more USB 3.2 ports, and we've also got dual Ethernet. So one of these is 2.5, the other one is gig, but I've just been plugged into the 2.5 port here, and it functions just fine. We also get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 with this unit. When it comes to upgrading the RAM and storage, super easy to get in here. At the top, we've got two screws on the rear, and that top plate's going to come right off. We can easily access that NVMe M.2 slot and the RAM. It uses SODIMM RAM. I'm running in dual channel right here. And if you did want to add a 2.5-inch drive, it's going to mount right here in the lid. Comes with the cabling and mounting hardware right in the box. We've also got another M.2 NVMe slot right here on the bottom. Now this is a little more to get to, it's just four screws instead of two, but we've got access to that other M.2 slot, so we can actually add a ton of storage to this mini PC. Now as you can see, the cooler is a blower style. It's using a copper cooler on that 12900HK, and it does make a little bit of noise, but not as much as some of the other mini PCs that I've seen. And I really think it comes down to the volume of air this can move at a lower RPM. With some of the other mini PCs, it's a much thinner blower style fan, so it needs to spin up much faster to move as much air as this thing can. Before we jump into testing, I'll give you a quick rundown on the specs here. For the CPU, we've got that Intel i9-12900HK. 14 cores, 20 threads, with a max turbo clock up to 5 GHz on this thing. When it comes to the GPU, we've got built-in Iris Xe graphics. This will support up to 64 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and the unit I have here is running Windows 11, but you could always install Linux on it if you want. So I've actually been testing this PC out for about a week and a half. This is a prototype unit before they launched their Indiegogo. And so far, performance is great. I mean, with that 14-core Alder Lake CPU, anything that needs CPU power, it's got you covered. I mean, this thing is absolutely amazing. But like I mentioned, out of the box, this is running at 65 watts, which is quite a lot for a mini PC. But if you want those higher clocks on the performance cores, you might want to take it up just a bit. And you can use Intel Tuning Utility to do that. But in this video, we're going to be running some benchmarks, testing out some 4K video playback. We'll test out some PC gaming and emulation. And by the end, we'll get an idea of how much power this consumes directly from the wall using a kilowatt meter, and I'll go over the CPU temps that I've seen while using this unit. Now using this as an everyday PC, it works out great. With that Wi-Fi 6 or Ethernet, personally I prefer Ethernet, but right now through my testing we're on Wi-Fi, I'm connected to my home network right now. Email checking, document editing, online or native from an app is going to work out great. But uh, the first thing we're going to test here is some 4K video playback from YouTube, and I suspect we're going to get really great performance out of this. We'll just go with this 4K 60 demo, and we are at a true 4K resolution with this monitor here over HDMI. But uh, we do have that DisplayPort and USB Type-C video out on the front. But from what I've tested so far, be it streaming or native 4K 60 playback, I haven't seen any kind of hiccups, and I kind of expected this given the power that this CPU is putting out. Before we move over to the benchmarks, I did want to test out a couple PC games. 
And first up, we've got GTA 5 900p normal settings, and it's doing way better than I thought it would. Now with the 12900HK, we do get those built-in Iris XE graphics with 96 execution units, and on their website they claim a max clock up to 1.45 GHz, and seeing what kind of performance this can put out in gaming, it's definitely coming way ahead of the Iris graphics with only 32 execution units. I'm actually glad we've got 96 here. So let's move over to God of War, which takes advantage of a higher-end GPU. And with this, we're at 720p low settings, and I have resolution scale set to 50%. And with it set up like this, I got an average of 36 FPS. So with a game like this on a lower end GPU, I would go ahead and just lock this at 30, but you could have a really good experience with it. Next thing I did was run some benchmarks, and the first one here is Geekbench 5, getting phenomenal scores in the single and multi. Single core, 1,681. Multi, 11,388. So it's definitely taking advantage of those extra cores and higher clocks on that single threaded performance here. I also ran PC Mark 10. Total score after the test was done, 5,888. Cinebench R23 was also looking really promising, and the CPU temps were way better than I thought they would be. By the end of this, we only hit a max of 87 degrees Celsius, and I know that does sound hot, but you gotta keep in mind that this CPU in this mini PC is running at 65 watt continuously for 10 minutes, stressing out all 14 cores. And with this, we got a total multi-core score of 13,028. Looking really nice for a mobile CPU. And the final thing I ran here was a GPU benchmark. We've got 3D Mark Time Spy with a total score of 1,869. So obviously we're not going to win any GPU benchmark awards with this unit here, but I think we can get some really good gaming out of the way. And I know for a fact when it comes to high-end emulation, this thing is going to truck through it given the performance we have on the CPU side of things. I've got a few more PC games I wanted to test out here before we move over to emulation. And first on the list is Skyrim. This is the original Skyrim. We've got a medium high mix here running really well at 60. And this is another one of those games that loves a powerful CPU. So we're good to go with this. I also wanted to test one of my favorite indie racing games right now. This is the Art of Rally. High settings, 1080p. I would turn V-Sync on with this, but as you can see, we can get an average over 80 FPS with this game. So yeah, this will definitely handle some great PC games, but one thing I was really interested in with this was emulation. So here we have SimU, the Wii U emulator, Bayonetta 2 running at 60 FPS. I did up the TDP using Intel Tuning Utility, but not specifically for this emulator. This will do fine at stock at 60 FPS. You're not going to have any issues with Wii U emulation on this system. The reason I took this up was actually for the next emulator, but if you take a look here, we're hitting around 84 to 86 degrees Celsius at 75 watts, and it's just trucking on through. The main reason I went ahead and upped that TDP was for this emulator here, RPCS3 for PS3 emulation. When it comes to Skate 3, it loves those higher clocks and extra cores, and in order to get those higher clocks, you do need higher wattage on this. I mean, we've got 14 cores and 20 threads to power at 65 watts, so adding a little more really helps out with this. But even Skate 3, one of the harder games to emulate for this PS3 emulator, runs at 60 FPS. The final emulator I tested was Yuzu, the Switch emulator, but I always blur out footage for reasons. We still have Afterburner fully visible up in the top left hand corner, and I'm sure you can get an idea of what game this is. But yeah, 60 FPS here, again we're still at 75 watts, and to tell you the truth, for Switch emulation, I don't think we need to be at 75 watts. Another thing I always like to take a look at with these tiny PCs is total system power consumption. So while I'm doing all of my testing, this is plugged into a kilowatt meter and I can get the full wattage from the PC, not just the CPU, but the total system. At idle, with nothing else going on, we're at 19 watts. Average gaming is around 83, and this is with it set at the stock 65 watt TDP. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall was 126 watts, which is quite a bit for a small PC like this, but we do have plenty of CPU power here. When it comes to average CPU temps, idle were around 38, 
Through all of the gaming and emulation you saw in this video, even with that TDP set up for 75 watts, we got an average across the board of 75 degrees Celsius, and HW Info logged the highest temperature at Sol of 86 degrees Celsius. Going into this, I was sure we'd see higher temps than that, but I think they did a great job with that copper cooler and that larger blower style fan in this mini PC. So on the channel, we test a lot of mini PCs, and when it comes to CPU performance, this is the best that I've seen so far. Now, of course, in the future we'll have more powerful CPUs in these mini PCs, but right now the 12900HK with those 14 cores and 20 threads does an absolutely amazing job. Of course having a little more GPU performance would be nice, but if you're looking for a small form factor PC with amazing CPU performance then this might be for you. And like I mentioned they are launching an Indiegogo, I'll leave a link for that in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Morphine S600 let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.